most part, you can't really have an RPG without some dice rolling. So it's about time I cover the various means we can roll dice in Roll20. The easiest way to roll a die is to use the dice rolling GUI. You can simply click on the dice buttons to roll a single die type, or you can specify a number of dice and add or subtract a modifier. It's pretty straightforward and only handles rudimentary rolls, but you might find this method faster than typing up simple die rolls in the text chat. To roll a die that way, you just start a line of text with a forward slash and the word roll. Then you follow it with the dice formula you want to use. There's ways to shorthand this process and hide a lot of the resulting text chat spam, which I'll address briefly below on the wiki. Since there's a lot of RPG systems that can use some pretty complicated rolling solutions, Roll20 tries to cover as many bases as possible. Check out our wiki documentation to see what sort of formulas we've already got covered. As you might figure, typing a common dice rolling formula repeatedly during a game would get really tiresome. Fortunately, we can build macros that can automate a lot of the toil. As an example, I'm going to create and share a macro that will roll for initiative. In Pathfinder, it's the same roll that everyone has to make before a combat encounter can begin, so it's going to be used a lot. I'm going to go into the My Settings tab of the sidebar and add a new macro. This will bring up the macro edit window automatically. An initiative roll in Pathfinder entails rolling a d20 and then adding a character's initiative modifier. If we write this macro using our barbarian PC in mind, his initiative modifier is a plus two. I'll add a line in the macro that mirrors exactly the same command I would have typed in the text chat. So, forward slash roll space 1d20 plus 2. Pretty simple, right? Well, sort of. In order to create a macro for everyone to use, it has to be flexible to utilize everyone's unique initiative modifier. We basically need to create a variable that stores the modifier for each individual character for the macro to be remotely useful. This is where that Attributes and Abilities tab on the character journals come in. If I open up our Barbarian's journal again, you'll see that I already have three attributes added, one of them being his initiative modifier. We can tap these attributes with our macros. If I was this PC's player, I could tailor my macro to utilize this attribute by first calling up my PC's name, followed by the attribute name. All well and good if I was this Barbarian's player and this was the only character I needed to worry about. You've probably noticed this is still stuck utilizing only a single character's initiative modifier. I'm going to utilize another means of selecting a character now. First thing I'm going to want to do is check off Show as Token Action. We'll see how this will come in handy shortly. Next, I'm going to replace our Barbarian's name in the Roll command with a different selector type. In this case, I'm going to replace it with the word Selected. Now after I select the Barbarian token, you'll notice that the macro button appears on the top left. This is what we call a token action. If I click it, it will run the macro like normal. It's pulling the initiative modifier linked to the currently selected token. I'm not stuck using only the Barbarian's initiative attribute, as you can see. This macro is available for all my tokens. So long as their linked character journal has the initiative attribute, it will roll correctly. Ta-da! Now we have a flexible macro. Last thing I need to do is to set the macro to allow all my players to use it. I'm going to edit my macro again and scroll down to the permissions assignment dropdown and select all players. Now when my players join my game, they won't have to do anything to roll initiative beyond clicking a button. I'm only scratching the surface of what you can do with macros. I'd recommend looking through our dice reference wiki page to see what's available. I'd also recommend checking to see if there's already a wiki document written for your RPG system specifically. Many times these pages conveniently include commonly used macros for you to copy over to your own campaigns. Mentor subscribers also have access to API scripting, which allows you to do even crazier automated things in Roll20. I'll talk about other extra features that can add even more fun and immersion to your campaigns in my next video.